Have you ever sat back and noticed how people believe that they are masters, that they have mastered a particular area, a particular career path, a particular field of study, right? They believe that they have mastered different type skills, whether it be mental, emotional, even spiritual. But when you look at people and how they feel like they are masters and you listen to what they say, you hear from here what they're talking about, as well as listen with your ear gate to filter, right? They really show themselves not to be masters and they really show how far from master they really are right and we're going to find that out and we're going to talk about that today about mastery all the things that we believe we've mastered or we're attempting we're in school we're in study you know uh we're old jt things that we're attempting to master but there's only one thing that we really need to master to be successful. You dig? We're going to talk about it. And when we talk about mastery, we talk about being proficient at the highest level. You know what I'm saying? Not on the way to learning. Not in the process of. No, no, no. That's not mastery. Mastery is when you have went through and you've came out and you have been deemed qualified. You've been tested. You've been um, ordained. You've been recognized. You dig? And you have mastered, meaning you have mastery, meaning there's nothing more that you can be taught or learned in a specific area or field, right? That's mastery. You have mastered it. You have so, you're so well-versed and you have such a deep revelation and understanding of a particular thing that now you have mastered that thing, right? Whether that be finances. A lot of us try to be, be masters of our finance, right? Do the best we can, make be uh, most efficient, um, be the most resourceful, be less wasteful. When it comes to our finances and our money, right? We're trying to master it, how to master our finances to where we can use it to the best of our ability and it's most advantageous to us. Other people try to master, you know, uh, fields, career fields, understanding different paths, you know, understanding whatever it is that you're doing that you, you know it so completely backwards and forwards under and over that there's nothing else that you can learn. You you've um, look at it from all different angles. You've gotten different perspective. You've had different eyeballs, and there's nothing more that you can learn from that thing. Whether it's a like I said, career field, whether it's spiritual, whether it's uh, emotional, right? You know your you know your emotions so well to where you've mastered your emotions. You know how to read them, how to understand them. You know when they're coming. You know what triggers them. We're talking about mastery, right? But there's one thing that many of us have not seemed to master. And regardless of your age, culture, creed, color, status, you know what I'm saying? Our tongue. That's the one thing that all of us should learn to master to be successful. We're going to talk about that in scripture. In the book of James, the third chapter, verses um, one through three, it talks about, he explains to us about how we should be masters of our tongue, right? Masters over the words that come out of our mouth and what we speak as so that we don't offend others, right? And that, um, that in not offending others and not saying things to offend, then as we master our tongue, we will become masters of our whole body. And once we, we become masters of our whole body, our whole life will change, right? Because 
We'll be more cognizant about what we say. We'll think before we speak. We'll be sensitive to others and to if what we say will offend or not. Why? Because before we say something, we're praying about it, right? We're weighing it. We're putting it on God's scale and we're balancing it to see if it's if it's a just weight. Because if it's, if it's a just weight, then it can be said. If it comes out that it's not a just weight, it doesn't balance out on God's scale, not ours, on God's scale, then it's an unjust balance and it's something that should not be said because it's going to offend. You dig? So does that mean that anything we say shouldn't offend? I didn't say that. Some people are going to be offended by the truth. But when we speak in truth, let it be in truth that's driven by God, led by the Holy Spirit to speak, not something that we feel that we need to say because we know it's true. Right. And they need to hear it. They need to know the truth because, you know, we may truly feel our heart. We don't want them going the wrong, wrong path. We don't want them to make mistakes that we see coming. But if God has not released you to open your mouth and say something and speak into someone else's life or to, to reveal the truth to them or to show them something. Do you understand that you could mess them up? You can really mess them up bad if God has not released you to speak into someone's life and to say something to someone that they're not prepared and ready for. That could be offensive. But see, we're not called to be offensive. We're called to be masters of one thing. And that's this, uh, this tongue. That's what we're supposed to be masters over. Because if we can learn to master what we say, if we can learn to kill our flesh instead of letting our flesh speak out the side of our neck, <laughs> right? You know, the first thing that come off our dome, we just bleh, bleh. It could offend somebody, it could hurt somebody's feelings. You could be speaking to someone else and, and what you're saying is directed to them, but someone else hear it. And they'd be offended. Why? Because the words that you say or and the words that I say, if we don't weigh them correctly, if we don't pray about those things, if we don't seek God's direction and we just talk, we could really be destroying people. We could be hurting someone. We could be offending someone. We don't even know it. And God has called us not to offend. You dig? Now, if he says to us to say something, then we ought to say that. But say just that. Don't add your two cents to it. And say exactly what he said, say. How he said, say it. Because all of that matters. Details matter. This is why it's so important that what? We master this. So we're not speaking out of turn. We're not saying something that God never told us to say. We're not putting our own two cents in it. And then it changes the whole you know, get down of what God wanted us to say in the first place. And then we mess it up. We, we screw people up. We hurt people. You did because of not being masters of this. So rather than try to master everything else, let's be masters of this. Being masters of your tongue. Does that mean that, you know, you're, you, you try to use it to be a master manipulator? Or a master liar or, you know, a con artist, you know, trying to be slick and sly, trying to, you know, master the art of of concealing your true meaning with words that people will only see on the surface. But on a deeper level, you know, what I'm saying you're trying to send a, a coded message. No, man, let's be masters of our tongue to not offend, to say loving things, to say peaceful things. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe a liar and a manipulator and someone that, that bends the truth and stretch, stretches the truth, someone that uh, doesn't have an honest rapport, someone that when they come around, their spirit just irks you and bothers you because when they begin to speak, it just it rubs you the wrong way? You know, a lot of things they say is offensive. So, again, I, I I try so hard to be careful with what I say. 
but to say what God says. Because it's not my goal to offend you. But if you're offended behind the truth and God has released me to say it, then maybe that message was truly meant for you. Because it's speaking to you. If you're offended, then that means something that I'm saying is, is catching your attention. And whether your flesh doesn't like it or your spirit is yearning and needs to hear it. It's never my intention to offend. It should never be your intention to offend. It should be our intention to be intentional about the words we speak according to how God has given us to say it. You dig? So again, first James chapter, I mean, sorry, not first, James chapter three, the first verse through the third verse. Check that out. Read that. I hope that it, it blesses you. I hope that you can understand it. And I hope that it speaks to your spirit because when we be, can become masters over our tongue and our mouths, our whole life will change. And then the words that we speak, people will receive. And when they receive it, their lives will be changed. You dig? Anyway, this is your man, LaVon. One love. Remember, Lamelli E. Love, uplift, motivate, inspire, learn, laugh, encourage, and enlighten. That's this channel's purpose, and it's my desire as your host, LaVon. This has been LaVon Says. Join me Monday through Friday for your motivational content because I post daily. And remember, on this Motivation Monday message, let us master our tongues. It'll change our lives. One love you, man, LaVon. I'm out.